Happy Saturday, Internet. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Udoka, and over here I discuss my own personal life journey and my two cents on anything. Um, people come here and subscribe for the vibe, for a different take, for a different opinion, um, because usually my opinions are unpopular. I want to talk about Dirty Dom today, but first, I'm really excited. I have some personal life updates. Like, number one, I will be getting a MacBook. Yay! I'm so excited. I can't wait for it to come in. Um, and that means that my videos might actually start getting edited. This is a big step. This is this is a big step. This is a big step for me. So I'm just really excited. Um, I've been slowly trying to upgrade everything on my YouTube channel. This YouTube is a hobby of mine, a little passion project. It has been a hobby and passion project for me since high school. So <laughs> I'm just happy that I'm finally getting to a stage in life where I can actually start I don't know, I can actually start making the stuff that I've been wanting to. We still have a ways to go, but I'm excited to provide more better quality. Also, on the mental health front, I am going to be doing a K boost. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I do a treatment that is FDA approved for drug resistant depression. Um, the treatment starts with a K. I have videos in my on this channel um, about it, and um, who knows? Maybe I'll be able to actually edit a video about what it's like. So we'll see. Oh, I also need to start meditating and all kinds of stuff, girl. There's this trend on TikTok called the Seventy Five Hard Challenge. I'm so close. I'm so close to actually participating. But anyway, let's talk about Dirty Dom now. If you don't know who this is, trust me, I've I've been following this scandal and I wouldn't be able to recognize this face if you showed it to me. This is Dirty Dom. He was a, a guy who was part of David Dobrik's vlogs. And he is the perpetrator in the whole cancellation of David Dobrik where um, he had some young uh, young women between like what the ages of 17 and, and 21. Um, most of them were not old enough to drink, had these women drinking um, for the lols, for the vlog. And Dirty Dom took two of them into his room and some things had allegedly occurred. Now, this happened a long time ago and then the cancellation happened. Um, how long ago has it been now? Um, let's see. Yeah, so it happened in April. So the fact that uh, this video, Dirty Dom, Uploaded. I don't know if this is an apology or um, a non-apology explanation, but this is coming out in September. Um, so it's kind of like, what is this for? <laughs> but I wanted us to kind of watch this together and see our thoughts and also put some context around the things that he says. I'm going to increase the playback speed. So we're not on here forever. Let's see what Dirty Dom has to say. Here, I want to take some time away from YouTube and just all of this to, uh, to be with my parents, to be with my family, and uh, just process all the information. Um, now I'm ready to talk. I was raised by my parents to be a good person and be honest. And I, uh, I don't think I've been honest with you guys. I think um, a lot of times I'm desensitized to stuff. I think a lot of times I act on impulse. And I, uh, I needed to take some time to really go through everything and analyze myself and you know show you show you guys who I really am. I haven't done a good job of separating Dirty Dom, the crazy party animal, you know, guy that hooks up with a bunch of girls and me, Dominicus, the guy that hangs out with my friends, goes to the beach, reads books, hangs out with my little brother Dom. 
Um, Dirty Dom was someone. So this makes me think that this video was just made for his fans um, because the general public that's, you know, appalled by the behavior, we don't care about the difference between Dirty Dom and Dominique. We don't care. Um, I'm sure your fans care. I'm sure your fans would love to get to know you a little bit better, but the rest of us don't care. So the fact that he's even touching on that makes me feel like, okay, this video was made for his fans. One I created when I moved out here to LA, I, I didn't smoke. I didn't hook up with girls. I didn't, I didn't drink in high school and I, I was never one of the cool kids. So when I moved out here to LA, it finally gave me a chance to reinvent myself and be who I wanted to be. I just wanted to be accepted by my peers, you know, by other people around me, by girls. I wanted to fit in. Now let's talk about what happened the night of those allegations. Also, some of the stuff I'm gonna be talking about is, um, it's, uh, it's gonna be pretty serious and it might trigger some survivors. We came up with the idea to do this five some bit. Um, so I put out an Instagram post saying, hey girls, come over, we need you know, 10 girls at the apartment, a bunch of girls, the more the better. Later that night, Hannah and I think like five of her friends show up and then vlog squad, there's me, there's Nick, there's Jeff, Todd, David, Jason, and Trisha. The girls show up, we start hanging out. A little bit later, Todd and Jeff leave and then they come back. We all start drinking with the girls. Uh, I'm talking to Hannah and a couple of her friends and the rest of the guys are talking to other girls. After a little bit, me and Hannah and her friend go to my room to hook up. We keep drinking and we start having sex together. While we're having sex, David, Nick, Todd, and Jeff are peeking inside the room. Everyone that looked inside the room didn't um, say that there was anything wrong or didn't feel any type of way um, and didn't bring anything up. After the girls and me- Whoa, 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 that's really gross. Um, I don't know why he would expect. So his friends were peeking inside the room while he was in the room with with this young lady and you know they're peeking inside the room because they were being dumb you know what I mean like that's just what dumb guys do they they're they, they're like oh our friends in, our friends alone with a girl oh let's see what's going on you know what I mean and then when you watch the vlog that's exactly what they were doing it was like oh what are they doing type of thing um I don't know what that's supposed to mean that they didn't say anything they didn't say anything wrong was happening what well, why would they think something wrong is happening they, they wouldn't know what's going on they're just peeking very briefly May maybe they couldn't even see anything actually I think that's what they claim they claim they couldn't even see anything so th that's just weird why would you expect them to say Hey, something bad is going on here. Stop it. That's, I don't know. That's not a realistic expectation. Me finished having sex. I was laying on the bed with Hannah and her friend. Um, at this time, we were all talking and Hannah falls asleep, right? She was drinking a little bit more than the other girl. So I just continued talking to the other girl for a little bit. After we're done talking and we're ready to go, you know, meet up with the rest of the squad and the girls, we wake Hannah up. Uh, her friend helps put on her clothes and helps her get dressed. And we walk out to meet the rest of her friends and block squad. I stay in the apartment and the girls, Hannah and Todd, Jeff, Nick, and David, end up uh, letting the girls out. The next day, David hits me up to finish the ending of the video where I'm like sweating and dripping in sweat and then Brandon's there and Alex is there and they weren't there the previous night but they were there um, to finish that scene, so. I also wanna note that here it's pretty clear that he does not believe that he essayed anybody. Um, because of how he's describing it. He's describing it like it was, they just had relations. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. He doesn't believe he somebody that happens the next day i also get a few texts from hannah the one that um alleged me of the sexual assault and here's what she said hi dom it's hannah just woke up thank you so much for having me over i know i was very drunk but i was having a blast and hope you did too also anything at your discretion is okay for the vlog just maybe not anything that a future employer could use against me he <laughs> tell your friends to go for it with the content he has and then i said hi glad you're okay i just woke up to lmao i had fun we should hang out again then she says hope you slept well i'm down this is I still not really should be or the weekend my, uh, so much work i said talking about nails was because but basically what he's trying to say is because she sent you know, these really cute texts that, hey, use the footage, because she sent that, he's kind of trying to show that this is evidence that essay didn't happen. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's not evidence that essay didn't happen. Um, that's not how essay works. I have recommended um, this user here, Katie Daisy, because lately there's just a lot of essay scandals going on. She talks about essay and gives it context that I think is so necessary right now. 
And I want you to listen to the anecdote that she's giving here that kind of explains why that friendly text message the next morning doesn't mean you didn't hurt somebody. Amelia was essayed by Max, a neighbor in her apartment complex, two months ago. Amelia had talked with him a number of times around the complex and found him to be friendly and engaging. On an afternoon, he stopped by her apartment with two beers, saying that he had just been hired on as a firefighter by the city fire department and he wanted to celebrate. He asked her if she'd like to toast with him and hear about his new position. She invited him in. After talking for a little while, Max walked over and started hugging and kissing her, saying that he always knew that they had a connection. Amelia told him that he had the wrong idea and she only considered him as a friend. She said she wasn't interested in him in any way. She tried to back away, but he pushed her against a wall. She said she wanted to scream and hit him, but she couldn't speak or move her arms. It was like her voice and body were frozen. Max continued on and essayed her. Amelia just kept thinking that she needed to get through it alive. First law enforcement interview with a detective 14 hours after the assault. When the detective asked Amelia what she was able to remember about the essay, she gave the following information in the first interview at the hospital. She remembered that Max's front teeth overlapped and had white spots on them. He smelled like cigarettes. She couldn't remember if they had finished their beer or not. She thought the assault probably lasted an hour. She couldn't recall if, she, if he had any noticeable tattoos or birthmarks. After he left, she took a shower, walked her dog, and went to see a band that night with her friends. She called her sister when she got back from the show and told her that Max had forced himself on her. Her sister said, Max essayed you. I'm coming over now to take you to the hospital. So in this first law enforcement interview, of course, this is a fictitious situation, and this is designed to show tra advocate trainees um, what the neurobiology of trauma looks like, but this reaction and these memories are very typical of what we would experience in the field with the survivor. First so of all, we know that she is remembering details that we may not deem as important. She knows that his teeth overlapped and that they had white spots on them, and she knows what he smelled like, but she does not know if he had any birthmarks or tattoos. She couldn't remember if she'd finished her beer, and she also said has a, a loss of time. She thought that the essay probably lasted an hour. Um, we see that she tried to, her brain tried to normalize the experience because after he left, she took a shower, walked her dog, and went to see a band. And she also did not realize the severity of what happened until she called her sister and told her sister what happened. And then her sister took her to the hospital. Any detective worth their weight and salt will wait at least three or four sleep cycles before they interview a survivor again to give the human brain a little bit of time to encode those memories and form more cohesive memories of the event. So two weeks later, at the follow-up interview at the station, Amelia gave the detective the following information. She remembered she had also checked the mail at the apartment complex office after the assault. Her beer had been nearly full, and she finished it before she took a shower. Amelia texted Max that she, uh, before she went to the concert to say that he'd left his belt at her apartment. She was leaving it at the bottom of the apartment complex staircase. In the days since the attack, the smell of cigarettes makes her heart race and makes her sick to her stomach. So what might raise some eyebrows? She changed her story, quote-unquote, about the beer, and then she finished it before she took a shower. I would imagine a police officer saying, well, if you were that upset about it, why did you finish your beer? Da -da 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 -da. That's just just, again, um, her brain's way of trying to normalize the situation for her and changing her story doesn't necessarily mean that she's lying. It just means that her brain had an opportunity to encode those memories a little bit more effectively. She also texted Max and left his belt at the bottom of the staircase. Again, I could see a detective saying that, you know, you contacted your perpetrator afterwards, so obviously you weren't that upset about it. Well, that's also a very normal response because her brain is trying to maintain the status quo as much as possible. Is it easier for her brain to say, okay, we're going to text Max and let him know that he left his belt here and we'll leave it at the bottom of the stairs or or is it more effective for her brain to say, oh my gosh, we were just traumatized and now this memory of this trauma is here. What do I do? What do I do? Okay. So I know I had her talking really fast, but I hope you caught that, that, that anecdote. Um, also, you have to consider uh, along with the, this idea that right after something like that, your brain tries to normalize it. Um, especially with something like essay where the lines can be so blurred, um, you really try to normalize it. You really try to just, you know, whatever, but also consider that this is dirty Dom and, you know, with David Dobrik and she is in footage of David Dobrik. She, she, if she were to actually properly react to this she's going against people more powerful than her <laughs> she's going against people with more money more fame more clout more support than her and that's also scary and you just got to consider it's kind of like if like if I went and met one of my I don't know some celebrity that 
maybe I really like them or maybe I'm just like, whatever, maybe I'm just lukewarm towards them. Like, I don't know who this little, who is somebody girl. I don't know. <laughs> like maybe if I went to go meet Drake, right. I'm not, I'm not a Drake fan, but also I'm not a Drake hater. I, I recognize that Drake is like a big name and I, I would think that's kind of cool to be invited. And if he did something to me, um, like it's hard to, it's hard to believe that somebody so prominent that, that could lose so much would do something bad to you. It's hard, it's hard to believe it. All in all, this text message doesn't show that she was an essay. At best, it can show us that he did not think she was essayed. However, what he doesn't include in this video is that, I don't know how many weeks later, she texted him saying, hey, actually, that night was not okay. And he fails to include all of those text messages in this conversation. That makes me feel like you're being incredibly disingenuous. Um, and what you're actually trying to do is you're actually trying to convince us that nothing, nothing, nothing below the belt, so to speak. You know what I'm trying to say? He's trying to tell us that nothing happened. Because I paint my nails sometimes and I asked her to help me paint them because I always screw them up when I do them myself. This was in November and then a few months later in February, I get a text from Hannah basically saying that you know, she wants to have the video taken down. Um, she doesn't like it being up. So I take screenshots of the conversation I had with her, the whole conversation, and I send it to David and he tells me how to reply. Yeah, so he showed us screenshots of the right after conversation about he can use the footage, do you need help with your nails, whatever. But he's not showing the conversation that's more serious. I just find that to be disingenuous. Why would you show us one, but you wouldn't show the other? To him. I have someone here that was there that day that David received those texts from me and basically told me how to reply. Hi guys, um, my name is Cassandra and I met David in 2017. In February 2019, who are you? David received a text from Dom. And when David received a text I don't from know who, who, who is this? Who is she to him? Is this his girlfriend, friends? What, I don't know who she is. Um, David did not want to take the video down. In the room, it was Jason, Natalie, and David. I decided to contact a friend of mine that is a lawyer, and she advised. And why did he bring? Why did he bring? I don't. Under, what is this? What is this? Okay. This is another mark. Another mark. If you started in A, he went down to B, C, and this is a D. Eyes that the video. Like, my instant reaction was to take the video down. We drafted different versions of what should be the response to Hannah. And one of the things I was... Why, why, why do we care about her opinion? She's saying her instant instinct was to take the video down, but we don't know who she is. We don't care. This video is about you. What was your instinct? Why? It's like he's offloading the responsibility of guilt onto this lady. Mentioning was that... Dom maybe raped a girl and that they should contact a lawyer and that they should have removed themselves to relate to Dom because of that situation and that Dom should have handled the situation with David. I will be discussing more things moving forward. Uh, the reason that led us to this video is because I interviewed Dom. This is something that's very close to my heart. As okay, she interviewed months, him. There's a lot of things that have come into my attention. One thing, for getting on here. You know, I know it's, um, it's tough to you know, talk about stuff like this. I appreciate you um, giving your input. I, um, I fucked up, man. I, uh, okay. I thought that by us filming this video, it was just another fun, stupid vlog. And I'm confused now. Are you confused? Are you confused with me? The whole first part of this video was trying to paint a picture that everything was was like a normal night, a normal night of fun. And now all of a sudden, seven minutes into the video, he's saying, I effed up. What what part was the F up? I just feel confused. I can I feel confused about what is he trying to tell us? I'm getting mixed signals. And that everything would be fine and nobody was harmed and I was wrong. It okay. impacted these girls and it's gonna it's gonna follow them for their whole life. And I uh, Dude, and 
This is weird. This is weird. This is weird. Are you getting weird vibes with me? Please leave me a comment if you're not. Leave me a comment if you feel like this point right here is genuine. Tell. Does this feel real to you? I know. I know. We shouldn't have. We shouldn't have filmed that video, and we shouldn't have put you guys in that position. And maybe you felt like you were there, and 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 you were going to be in the video. It was supposed to be fun, and. Um, it turned out being not fun. It turned out being humiliating and degrading and embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I wanted was for you guys to feel like, um, like we're using you. I, um, I want to say I'm sorry to Hannah and to her friends for putting them in this position and for not. I don't know. But you were using them. Like that, that's the whole point. That's the whole mentality. That's how you guys even have these vlogs. You, you, I don't know. I don't, I can't even put into words what I'm thinking right now. I feel very like, huh? Like the question marks are all over my head. If I had an editor, they would put question marks all over my head right now. Uh, considering their feelings and for not taking them seriously and for um, making a mockery and a joke out of them with this video. I understand that it's going to take time for you guys to heal the last thing I want. Well, not just with the video that you guys uploaded, but with your reaction when they came out. So what he's not including as well is that when these girls started coming out with their allegations and it started going viral, he was mocking them, like, like literally mocking them. Here's a clip from Frenemies <laughs> podcast. Um, with some examples of how Dirty Dom was really not taking the situation seriously. You want to talk about Dirty Dom making TikToks about... Uh, yeah, okay, so Dirty Dom is back. So annoying. So just... By the way, it's just really, really weird to rewatch these clips of moral judgment from Trisha Paytas when she is literally just like the people that she's judging <laughs> just the well you know what's annoying is he's like making fun making light me. of the situation as if like he didn't get caught I'm so okay go ahead sorry you think you can hurt my feelings i got kicked out of the vlog so he's so disgusting he looks like a little rat that needs to be in jail i wish these people would press charges and i know it's like <laughs> embarrassing and it's a lot of work or whatever but if you ever want to sue people there's lawyers that'll do it for pro bono if you ever want to press charges it's never too late until it's too late i think it's like 10 years or maybe that's gone now but i know it was 10 years I don't know what the statue that's so interesting she said it's never too late till it's too late that's what she said during her twitter breakdown a couple of weeks ago but crime. look at these people they just get away with it and guess what he'll probably do it again because he thinks he's funny and all these like kids are like yeah we love you don't let he'll them get it down do it again. he'll do it again yeah. and it's just so it's like james charles all these new people come out because nothing is happening until you go to jail like austin jones like until like that happens like then these people keep doing the shit yeah and they should, think it's like, funny he should, he should be on a sex uh, registration for sure like dom needs, he needs to tell people when he moves into their neighborhood so many people were like why isn't dom getting canceled and it was kind of because like dom was already well, getting canceled yeah, exactly. no everyone no yeah. everybody like nobody gives a fuck wow look at this ratio Bruh, imagine having such a strong fan base that your like to dislike ratio looks like this. Four, over 4,000 likes and less than 150 dislikes. That's like, you never see that. You never see that. About but honestly, we should talk about him more if he's doing this shit because well, yeah. he, like now he's like he's I saw a clip of him being like why did David Dobrik kick you out? He's like I was getting all the pussy or something like that. It's just like clip, but yeah. oh it was I just saw it on your TikTok. So I thought it was yeah. no, I don't they know. Really he goes, why did why did David Dobrik kick you out of the vlog? But he's like because I get more pussy than him. I was like first of all we know David likes to watch so that's not true. Ugh. And second of all you actually to drink you had to get him drunk to have sex yeah, with you exactly. disgusting freak. You're actually just an R word. Honestly, he's so gross. Like and yeah. So anyway, he put this out like what one day ago was it? Here it says yeah one day ago. The dude like seriously he's for real. He's being accused of R of essay right. And he puts out this TikTok saying, you think you could hurt my feelings? It's this TikTok meme. And the song is bulletproof. And he's like, I got kicked out of the block squad four. Like, what does he want to finish? This I wouldn't even, yeah. Okay. I, I thought they were going to show more of his TikToks. This is not the only TikTok he made kind of making fun of the situation. Um, so I, I find it weird that he's not apologizing for these TikToks as well. You know, I find that odd. You're claiming that you understand how the video posted on David's channel was very humiliating, but you're not acknowledging these TikToks as well. What is for you guys to feel envy or feel hatred towards yourselves for, you know, um, being in this video because it is our fault. The responsibility falls on us as content creators to make sure that whoever we're filming or whoever we're putting in our videos is comfortable and knows what they're getting into. And we didn't do that. We just posted this video because we thought that it would give us more money and more clout and, um, 
yeah, we, 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 fucked, we fucked up. I think there needs to be some type of way for YouTubers and anyone else in the social media space to do things the right way. And I, uh, I, I, don't, know, I, don't, I don't know the answer. I wish I, I wish I did. Growing up, I, um, I had all guy friends. I never really had, you know, a lot of female peers, you know, besides my mom and, and, and my aunt. Um, so I never really got that female perspective on stuff. I understand it's, it's, a, it's a scary world out there for women, you know, even walking down the street at night as a girl. It's completely different than walking down the street as a guy. It's that type of perspective that you get when you have those conversations, when you talk to girls, when you live with them, that you start to understand the world and you start mm-hmm. to understand women. And I start to understand when myself When you stop more. being an insult. Oh, it's almost finished. Let me let him finish. Or in the decisions that I make. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Okay. Oops. Don't play, even though I love this creator. Yes. Um, it's really interesting when you start viewing women as actual human beings and not just you know c-u-m buckets for your pleasure (laughs) yeah we have feelings and thoughts and opinions and hopes and dreams and you know just like you do (sighs) yeah it's really disheartening um that that kind of feels like the norm as a as a girl it feels like the norm for guys to to not understand us our our point of view um but what's funny is like it's not like a you don't experience X, Y, Z, so you wouldn't understand. It's it's more of a, literally, if you were in this position, you wouldn't want that done to you. Like, if, if you were in their position, if a prominent person tweeted, hey, we want people to come over and be in the vlog, and you answered as a man, and, or, And you were underage, but they provided you drinks. So you're like, okay, I'm going to drink. I'm hanging out with these rock stars. And, you know, like you, and then something humiliating happened to you. And you didn't want to embarrass yourself further. So you just say, yeah, it's totally cool. (laughs) Like use the footage. And then you come to grips with what happened. And you say, actually, never mind. Actually, that was messed up. Actually. You know what I mean? Like you would you would feel how those girls feel. It's not even a it's not even a gender thing. It's it's literally we're not we're not talking about, you know, oh, you don't know what it feels like to be a pregnant woman or you don't understand you don't understand the beauty pressures they put on women in our society. It's not even a gender thing. It's like if you were literally in their shoes as a man, you would feel how they're feeling. And if you never owned up to it, if you just try to push it down, you would still feel how they feel. Even if you never had the strength to say that was messed up because Jeff Wittick experienced that. Jeff Wittick is another guy who was on the vlog squad. And what happened to him? Yo, see, I don't even, (laughs) that's how little I know these dudes. I couldn't even spell his name right. He has brain damage, eye damage. Because they did a stunt on a crane and, you know, at first he was like, uh, whatever, man, uh, we're just dumb, uh, you know, use the footage. And then after a while, he realized, you know what, actually that was messed up and he didn't want to come out. He didn't want to, he, he didn't want to talk, but because it's embarrassing and it's, I don't know what it feels like that I don't under, I don't know the male ego aspect of things, but I just have this idea that for men, the the sh- there's a a level of shame that digs at your own feeling of who you are as a man. So my point is, this is not even a. a This is not even a, uh, I need to understand women more thing, dirty dom. This is a, you need to understand people. You need to understand yourself. You need to understand that people are people like you (laughs) thing. So that, that, that explanation. Oh, now I don't even know where it is. Oh, I guess we X'd out of it. That explanation was not good. 
very confusing, very mixed message. Um, and he, I was watching an honest conversation. I really enjoy her videos as well and her opinions. And she just felt like it was very performative. Dom, Dom's motives only. And I say this because Dom, he brings up here. Hannah's text message. As YouTube creator, people, individuals in their vlog without getting their consent, without, you know, having a team, human resources, etc. Mm. Now. Let's dive into what I hated about this whole entire video. This video was not for Hannah and her friend. This video was all. purely for Dom, Dom's motives only. And I say this because Dom, he brings up Hannah's text messages like the day after the incident. And you know, in these text messages, Hannah is saying how she had a blast and how she was gonna come over to paint his nails. And that's fine that you wanted to put that in there. But the very fact that you left out the part where she messaged your ass in February stating that you basically R-worded her, how come that wasn't in there? I know there's an insider article about it, but he just felt if you're already gonna talk about this, you might as well put up the whole thing. Now we knew David Dobrik was a piece of shit because we knew in order for David to take down that vlog, we knew David had to know some information about what happened that night. So for David to go on to say that he just had no idea, like I did not know what happened in that room, it's false. It's not accurate because David, then what did you know to make you take down a video that had millions and millions of views? And with Cassandra, I am curious to why yes, yeah. she chose now. I'm just curious just because she was in that room. So she had all this knowledge I don't even know who Cassandra and is, decided to so. share it with <sighs> us today. And if what Cassandra says is true, then Natalie, we already knew Jason was a piece of shit, but Natalie is a piece of shit too. I don't know who Natalie is too either. Skin. I did not like the fact that this video was extremely performative because Dom edited this video. So he wanted us to see those moments to where he was like this. I mean, he wanted us to see the moment of him just like, oh my gosh. I would be just a tad bit more understanding if this video was not edited and he just did it straight through. But the very fact that it was kind of illustrates to me that all of this was effing performative AF. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, he posted this on a Friday night. If you don't know, no one really watches YouTube like that on a Friday night, okay? He did it on the night where he thought people would like... So my thoughts about this video, uh, Dom looked into his bank account and was like, oh my goodness, I probably need to make a real apology now because I'm but it wasn't low. even an I also apology. believe that Dom's real. motives for bringing up David, Todd, Nick, and Jeff was like that mindset of, well, you can't cancel all of us, you know? And it's kind of like, Actually, it'll be easier for him to come back okay. because it wasn't just him who did something bad. It was all these other people who he listed in the video. So it's like, you can't cancel all of us. So it's kind of makes it easier for him to come back in a way. Do you get what I'm saying? I think Dom saw David is coming back from being canceled because now he's doing something with the Discovery Channel. He's like, uh, no, I'm still sinking here. No, I'm bringing all of you guys down with me. That's what this was about. Oh, <laughs> this was about making sure all these other fuckers sink with him. That's what this was about. But yeah, mm. leave a comment below. Let me know what you That's guys think. Theory. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye guys. All right, so that was an honest conversation. That's an interesting theory that he's just trying to restoke it. Um, because he's seen that the other guys are trying to move on. But, you know, if if that is what he's doing, it's, it's really dumb because nobody else has said that night. It was just you. It was just you, Dom. Just you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, for my, I feel that that video was weird. It made me feel very weird. Um, one, the way he was describing it, he was describing it like, it was any other fun night. That's how he was describing it too. He brought in that Cassandra lady who I don't know who she is. Okay. But I don't understand why you're bringing her in. Why is her opinion? Why is, why is it important? You, you stated at the beginning of the video that you're wanting us to understand you. So why did you bring in this person who granted she had a better take than he did? Apparently, her first instinct was to remove the video, and she was actually calling what happened what it is. She was calling it R word, and she just had a better take than him. So I'm like, why did you bring her in? Because her opinion is not your opinion. 
we're watching this for your opinion and you're and you said at the beginning of this video that this video is about us getting to know you so what who is she i didn't like that and then the third thing is and towards the end he's saying we, we messed up and just you know listen there's some people who are watching this channel who feel like like i don't take people's emotions seriously um but it's when it's just not making sense. And I'm in, I feel like, like what, um, miss an honest conversation said, when I feel like it's performative, when I feel like something's off, this is, it doesn't make sense. Mm, let me try to understand what you're feeling. Like, are you trying to emotionally manipulate me? And that's what it felt like. I felt really weird when he was starting to get more emotional because it was like a complete flip for what, from what happened in the beginning of the video. In the beginning of the video, everything just made great sense and everything was just fine. And she even texted, had a blast. But now at the end of the video, you're stressing out and you're, it's not connecting for me. It doesn't make sense. So I don't. I don't feel it. And furthermore, um, just overall, it makes me feel like, you know, I know she has, she, let me point to the video. She has her opinion about what it is, <laughs> but I think he's just ready to come back to the internet and he needs to address his actual fans and his fans will feel closer to him because of this. And they will feel like maybe we're ready to move on now so he can get to making content like everybody else is. I, I do agree that he is noticing everybody else is moving on. And he's like, hello, I need to get it back too. Hi. Hi, Dom here. Hi. Hi. You know, it's been a while. So, yeah, what happened? That... You know, that was a little snafu, but <laughs> I'm sure you can agree that we can all just move past this, right? Right. So anyway, how's the 2021 going? That's the vibe that I'm getting from it. That was weird. <sighs> really sorry to the victims. Um, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes if they're getting any reparations for that, but... um that that was a crazy whirlwind when that was coming out. I'd love to hear your thoughts though. What do you think of this dirty Dom exposing the truth? Did he expose the truth? Was it worth exposing the truth? I mean, the point is his money and career is online. And if he's going to start earning an income again, he had to address it some way, somehow. And this is how he chose do you think, um, I mean, just tell me what you think. What are your thoughts? So anyway, thank you for sitting with me for 40 minutes on a Saturday. You really could have and should have been, you know, like going for a walk or honey, I don't know. It's a Saturday. You know, I've lived the lifestyle where every day was like the weekend for me. I've lived that lifestyle before. And now I'm living the, you have a nine to five lifestyle. And it actually honestly is really cool to have a day where you really just feel like we're relaxing, we're free. It's just an interesting feeling. Um, <laughs> and it actually feels really good. I don't know. It's kind of like, you ever do those meditations or those massages where you tense up your whole entire body and then you relax it? And so when you're relaxed, it's like you're really relaxed. It feels really cool. So I hope you're making the most out of your Saturday, whatever way that means for you. I hope you like the new, um, what is this called? New robe. It's the kind of robe that doesn't make me hot so I can wear it all day, whole time. And until next time, much love, much luck. Peace out.
Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching. Can't wait to hear from you. Bye.